Hey guys, Kimmy Vapes here. Welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be reviewing the Mach 1 by USB. Let's have a vape. Go down below and see what it comes with. Okay, so here we have the Mach 1 dual battery squonker kit. This was sent over to me by USB for the purpose of this review. Let's go ahead and open up the box and see what this kit contains. So when you open up the box, you're going to have a Mach 1 insert card and this just gives you their socials, their Instagram, their Facebook, as well as their email for servicing. And then we have their warranty card insert and the Mach 1 user manual. You're going to have a spare parts bag with your US RDA post screws and a spare 510 pin in case you want to use the RDA for something other than squonking. You can get this cute little jar here of coils. And on the jar is going to say these are Clapton coils, 26 gauge wrapped in 38 gauge nichrome 80 two coils will ohm out to a 0.15 to a 0.18 ohm resistance which is a really big plus that they include all of that information on those coils and then you're going to also have your usb charging slash upgrading cable so sitting that to the side let's go ahead and look at the device i'll give you some specifications of the device it is a dual 18650 battery device it has a 1.3 inch tft display the power range is 5 watt to 240 watts it does support temp control 200 degree fahrenheit to 600 degree fahrenheit it has an input volt input voltage of 5 volts to 15 amps and output voltage of 1 volt to 8.4 volts the resistance supported is 0 0.1 ohm resistance to 2 ohm resistance and it has the available power bypass and temperature control modes Let's go ahead and cover the USB Mach 1 RDA first now this is a squonking ready atomizer it is a 24 millimeter RDA dual slotted airflow. Whatever you do to one side, it will do to the other. It has an 810 Delrin drip tip, which is really hard to get out when you first get it. Those O-rings are quite tight, but it has a very large bore 810 drip tip. Here is your airflow control ring. You can see all of the different options that it offers. And it is a standard two post design. I'm going to remove that center barrel so that you can see the posts. There's your center barrel. This is primarily made of stainless steel construction. Here are your thumb screws at the top, they are flathead thumb screws. There's your post holes on the sides. And this is your positive, negative, and there you can see your squonk hole for your squonking. And take a look at the mod real quick. So here is your fire button right here. And then you have your plus and minus buttons situated on either side of your USB port for charging and upgrading. The total dimensions of this is going to be 91 millimeters tall, 54 millimeters wide by 35.5 millimeters deep. On top, you can see your very large stainless steel 510 plate with a gold-plated spring-loaded squonking pin. Let's take a look at the sides here, the branding Mach 1 on both sides of the device. Taking a look at the back, this is going to be your back panel, which if you remove it, that exposes the squonk bottle. This is an 8 ml capacity squonk bottle. You have four magnets on each point to hold on your plate. No wiggle or rattle with that plate, but I will say it comes off really easily. To insert your 18650 batteries or to remove your squonk bottle, you'll, you'll push back and pull out on this door. Now I will say when batteries are not inserted in this, it can be quite difficult to get this door open, I found. So as you can see, if you have nails, what I usually do is take a tool, push it back, 
and pull open. There we go. So not the easiest door to open there. Now it is on a hinge, but it's not spring loaded. Here you can see the positive and negative indicators. Very easy to read. Now to remove your squonk bottle, you're gonna put your fingernail or your finger on this notch and push down and that's gonna expose, that's gonna allow you to pull out your squonk bottle. So there you can see the stainless steel tube on the inside. And here is your squonk bottle. So here we can fill up our squonk bottle and just stick the nose of my e-liquid bottle down there and fill it up. Now that we filled our squonk bottle, we'll simply line it up with that nozzle at the end of your tube and slide it back up into place. And it stays there really well. I can slide my finger up and down on it and it's not really moving that bottle. It's going to hold in there really nicely. Let's go ahead and put some batteries in. So positive down on this side, negative down on this side. And push it back and forward. Now we can put our plate back on. And now we can affix the RDA. So here is the menu screen of the USB Mach 1 mod. On either side you have a battery indicator and then there at the top of this odometer style screen you have your wattage indicator. Below that you're going to have your resistance and your voltage. And then below that you're going to have your preheat indicator ENS. So to lock the menu screen it's five clicks. One, two, three, four, five. Unlock. One, two, three, four, five. Now, if you don't want to just turn the device off, you, or if you don't want to just lock the device, you actually want to turn the device off, you actually have to go into the system menu and click system off. So to go into the Mach 1 menu, you'll press the power button three times in quick succession. One, two, three. And there's your menu, and you can use your up and down. So first one we have is the power, temp, bypass, update, settings, lights, system off. So system off is where you can actually fully turn the device off. Let's go to the settings. In settings, you have your puff resetter, reset button and your wallpaper. So if you go into lights, that gives you the option to dim or brighten. So not the brightest screen I've ever had. This is fully powered up. It is easily readable. Pressing the fire button will take you back to the main menu. You can press power and that will take you back. So that is how you navigate the Mach 1 Squonk Mod menu system. Let's go ahead and put a build in the USB RDA. So building on this RDA should be super simple. Now keep in mind you do have to share lead space since it's a single hole per post. So you're not going to be able to fit really big beefy coils in there. But I'm using just the regular staple coils that I like to use for all of my builds when I'm testing. And we'll just feed a lead in on that side. And what I'm going to go ahead and do is get my coil dissonance and then clip my leads. So once I've clipped my leads, I can go ahead and place my other coil on and clip them to be the same length. And I will say these posts are spaced quite far apart, so you're going to be able to fit pretty big coils as far as number of wraps. Once I have a coil placed in on one side, I can go ahead and place my coil on the other side. And then I'll just hold both my coils in and tighten down those top screws. And these are thumb screws, so you can hand tighten them first. But I'm just going to go ahead and use my flathead screwdriver to do it. So I have those tightened down. Finish tightening them, and then I can straighten my coils out. And you do want to make sure that your coils are 
not sticking out past the edge of that deck. And I'm going to go ahead and do spaced coils for this build. And this is just a quick, not very fancy build. Not being overly careful here, just making sure that the coils don't extend past that lip of the deck. Try to make sure they're somewhat even there. And let's see where my airflow sits. So, so it looks pretty good for where the airflow sits. It's going to hit, obviously, both above. It's going to hit there right at the top. That very top line is going to be hitting the top of my coil. And then, of course, everything below that will be hitting the bottom and side of my coil. Let's go ahead and pulse these. So coming out to a 0.14, which is what those staple coils always come out to me. We'll go ahead and put the wattage up. And let's go ahead and pulse those. And they're pulsed nice and evenly from the inside out. Let's go ahead and wick it up. So one thing I want to point out with squonk mods like this that have a flush squonk pin, always make sure that your cotton is nowhere near that squonk pin because you don't want your cotton to accidentally start blocking the hole and prevent e-liquid from going back down into your bottle. So this RDA has quite a deep juice well, so I don't think we're going to have any problems with wicking. And I'm just going to go ahead and leave those ends a little long so I can fold them down, but I want to make sure that they're not so long that they're going to drift over to that squonk pen. So, and I also don't want my cotton to impede the airflow. So we're just going to tuck it down on either side and let that cotton just nicely rest on the bottom of the deck, but don't have your cotton so long that it actually folds underneath the coil like this side's doing. So I'm going to cut the tails of my cotton on this side a little more. Just gonna cut, tuck that cotton down there. And now we're ready to squonk. So the bottle is quite stiff. So let's go ahead and push in. So I have long nails and already I can say this bottle is not really gonna work for me because I have to push in and it's quite difficult to push in with those long nails. So I'm gonna use both of my thumbs to squonk it. I'm going to go ahead and squonk all the way up to the lip. Let it suck the e-liquid back down into the bottle. And I'm also going to just put a couple drops right on the coil to help it along. And now we can fire it and get the e-liquid moving up into those coils. Squonk it again. And there we go, it's squonking. So let's go ahead and line up our airflow. With our coils. Now, for this, it is a two-piece top cap. And there is no locking on it. So what we're going to need to do is hold that center barrel while I adjust my airflow. And we have several different airflow options for this RDA. You have the option to open both the very top row and the bottom row. And you can, of course, close that off halfway, just the top row. 
Then you can have the center and the bottom row open. And then you start to open that top row again. So those are your airflow options. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to start out with it fully open as wide as it can go. So that is the Mach 1 by USB. Let's go back up top, have a vape on it, and I'll give you my thoughts and opinions. Okay, and that was an up and close of the Mach 1 Squonk Kit by USV. Now, what are my thoughts? Well, let's go over the USV RDA first. So, the pros I have for the USV RDA is that it is well machined. It's easy to build on. It has nice, smooth, quiet airflow. I'll let you take a listen. Lots of clouds there, and I even have that closed down to only the middle section open. So when I say lots of airflow, it definitely, if you leave it wide open, has lots of airflow. But you have the option to restrict it down as well, which I like. The next is going to be that it comes with lots of accessories, and in those accessories are coils. Let me go ahead and grab those real quick. So the coils that they include here, they actually put the details of what the coils are made of and what type of coils they are. And that is a huge pro to me, because as you guys know, whenever a company includes coils with their devices, I really want to know what the material is, because I feel that's important for vapors to know, especially if they may have any allergies. So now let's go into a con for the RDA. So the only con I really have for it is that the barrel free spins. As you guys know, if you've watched my other RDA reviews, I don't like when barrels free spin because it makes them difficult to unscrew off of your mod without losing position of your airflow adjustment. And that can be quite annoying if you have to take it off your mod, or even if you're just trying to adjust your airflow. Sometimes the airflow can be difficult to adjust and you have to hold that center barrel while you adjust your airflow. Otherwise, the whole barrel spins. So that's the con that I have for the uh, uh, for the RDA. Otherwise, it's a decent RDA. It's not one of my top RDAs, but I think they matched it well with the Mach 1. Now, speaking of the Mach 1, let's get into the pros of the Mach 1 Squonk Mod. So just like with the RDA, everything on here is well machined. The fit and finish is good. The back panel door doesn't have any rattle. It does have a little bit of side to side play, but not enough that it makes any audible noise. Next pro is going to be the screen itself. The screen is very easy to read. I really like the layout and the graphics on the screen. I think it's very nice and fresh and new, and I like that about it. And it's also easy to navigate. It does have a very intuitive menu system very easy to navigate and for that it gets a pro and the next pro is that it being a squonk mod it has an 8 ml capacity bottle so you can have lots of e-liquid in your squonk mod now the squonk bottle is going to lead into some subjective cons that I have for the mod. And I call them subjective because some people aren't bothered by this. If it was really, for me, it's a hard con, but I understand not everybody vapes like I do. So I'm just gonna leave it as a subjective con for you guys out there. And that is that it's a proprietary bottle. The bottle itself, you're not gonna be, use, be able to use any other bottle out there. And also for me, what makes me a little iffy with this protect proprietary bottle is that it's made of two different materials. It has silicone, but it also, the backside of it is made of a hard plastic. And I feel like for that reason, it might, when it degrades, it might be prone to cracking or releasing from that hard plastic in the back. So that's a subjective con, but for me, it leans more to a hard con because I really don't like this bottle and I'll explain why. So the bottle is quite deeply inset inside this window. So there's no bottle extending out here for you to push with the fatty part of your finger, meaning you actually have to use the tip of your finger. And if you're like me and you wear nails or you have long nails, 
that's impossible. I'll be honest, you guys. I don't squonk this bottle with my finger. You know what I do? I pick up something that's small that I can wedge in there, whether it be the back of this, and I squonk it. Because squonking it with my finger, even with my thumb, it's so deeply inset in there that it's really hard for me to get in there and squonk. So for me, this squonk mod just doesn't do it for me just because of the way that that bottle system's designed, how far it's recessed in that door. Now, if you're a guy and you have big, strong fingers, you'll probably have no time squonking this. So that's why it's subjective. If you guys like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. If you're not already, click that subscribe button. If you are subscribed, don't forget to hit the little bell icon so you get notified the next time I upload a video. Thanks for watching, you guys. Bye-bye.